Welcome to In The Mix with yours truly, Jeannie Ortega. I'm coming to you from the Sunshine State, Orlando, Florida. It is my honor to be your host today on TV and Salsa. Thank you to Matt and Lori Crouch as well as Sammy Rodriguez for giving us another opportunity to boast on God. With this show, it's my heart to highlight people in movies, music, media, and ministry that are doing things for the kingdom of God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from heaven. Well, it also says that God has given a gift to each and every one of us to share with each other as good stewards of his amazing grace. Today, I get the incredible honor of introducing you to U.S. Air Force veteran, pastor of Most High Kings Ministries, and important, most importantly, my best friend, my life partner, and my husband for almost 10 years now, Ren the Righteous Rebel Law. Thank you, thank you. Ooh. My pleasure to be here. I'm your biggest fan, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's incredible because today we just really wanted to sit down with you guys and just give you a walkthrough on our life together. Uh, I feel like there's not a lot of examples of husband and wife couples that are living in the Lord and healthy and working it out. You know, not perfect, but working it out. And um, I really wanted to do that. So before we go into our love story, I would love for you to just give a brief testimony of how, just who you were and how you came to the Lord. Okay. Well, for me, basically, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and I was in the tough streets of Brooklyn and, you know, just trying to navigate life and about around the and I would say like 10 years old, my parents actually got divorced. Mm -hmm. And that literally just like shattered my whole world and kind of just dismantled everything. I just felt like everything went crashing and burning. But from there, basically, just started a process of God just trying to reach me in my brokenness. Mm -hmm. So I went through high school and all these different stages of life, just kind of lost and miserable. And then somewhere when I was in the last year of high school, um, the 9-11 actually occurred. Mm -hmm. And I saw the Twin Towers actually drop and kind of just burned down before my eyes. And from there, I kind of started to pray and ask God, what is the purpose of life? Like, why are we here? You know, like, I'm not gonna be a sitting duck in New York. So I actually decided to go down Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn, Brooklyn. and go to Air, the Air Force um, recruitment station and enlist. And then from there, they actually stationed me in Okinawa, Japan. So when I went to go fight for our nation, for our country, I also went on a spiritual journey to kind of seek God and figure out what is the point of life, if he's even real, and then just yeah. kind of develop from there. Yeah, and so you figured, you're putting your life on the line and yeah. it could all be done in a second. Is there a God? What's the purpose of life? And Jesus meets you in Japan. He didn't even yeah. have any Christian friends or anything. And God is so good that he met you there. And basically when I was in Japan, you know, like the mission was going and it was very busy, but I still had that burning in my heart to find the truth, to find God, yeah. to seek for him. So on my days off or when I was actually not flying, I actually decided to start researching all the major religions. And I went through like the 25 major religions and from there um, started to like just compare and contrast them all down. And I got down to Christianity, mm -hmm. Judaism and Islam. And I always make the joke that I squeezed those together and Jesus popped out, you know, for all my seminarians <laughs> yeah. out there. So That's Jesus some simple theology. So Jesus was the main factor. So you're like, I'm going all in. Mm -hmm. So you give your life to Jesus. You're, then he goes on a journey where he's in love. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's Jesus and he's going to live for him. Now, in my side of the story, yeah. um, actually, I'll show you a little bit. I grew up in Brooklyn as well, broken home, ran away pretty much into the music industry, became a famous pop star. And we have a little roll in of my testimony so we can fast forward. I don't have to tell you myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray 
that you cover me when I'm up there, cover my voice, cover, you know, everything that I do, that I don't mess up, that I give everybody a good show. She's from Bushwick, Brooklyn, Jeannie Ortega. <laughs> Welcome for the first time, Jeannie Ortega. Yeah. Jeannie Ortega, she's anointed. We love. testimony but I'm grateful for what God has done so here we were we were trying to do our own thing then mm -hmm. God made a way for us to get to him so I know that I'll tell I'll say me before I met this man I did not want anything to do with a man I just wanted Jesus I had learned that Jesus can fill my life that all the things you know I had fame I had success I, I could have whoever I want back then and none of that fulfilled me nothing but Jesus did. He did. And as I just, you know, discovered that and grew in him, I did not want a husband. That is exactly where I was <laughs> when I met you. Where were you right before we met and leading up to where we met? Well, basically, once I got saved in Okinawa, Japan, like I went on this deep journey with God to try to like find him. So I, um, God actually told me to come out of the military. So I was on my way back from Okinawa to New York, but I had to stop into Oklahoma. I was at a Tinker Air Force Base was where I was stationed. And from there, I just took it upon myself to really learn the basics of God and to try to like dig into the word. And God provided an awesome church for me there to just learn the foundation. But I really went like a good three years of just solid sold out time with God and just focusing in on my own walk and letting him purify me and cleanse me and sanctify me. So I guess eventually, so I could be ready for this beauty. <laughs> oh, praise. <laughs> He's saying it because we're on TV. But the truth is we were both in the exact same place. We were not looking for a significant other. We have finally given that up we laid that on the altar we wanted Jesus and Jesus only mm -hmm. so my husband is from the island Grenada Grenada. So he's white, black, and Indian. Yeah. And, um, you know, they speak Patois. And he was on his way to Grenada to, it's beautiful, it's paradise on earth there. And he was going there to grow out his beard, read his Bible, and learn about Jesus. And we yeah. meet in church. Yeah. So I meet him, his mom introduces us. And the day that I met him, the pastor's praying for all the single women in the church. And I was one of the worship <laughs> leaders. He calls me up. For prayer, I didn't want prayer. I didn't want a husband. I was content with Jesus. But the pastor calls me up anyway because they knew that I was single. And as I'm standing there for prayer, I could feel like this, this presence on my back, you know. So I look back, and it's almost like the whole church just parted. <laughs> and here was Ren standing back there, and he wasn't looking at me. But it was almost like this, I, could, I was being drawn to him. And um, as I was being drawn to him, I, the Holy Spirit says, that's your husband. So the, I, never, I hadn't even met him yet. 
And I thought it was myself. I'm like tripping. I'm like, mm -mm -mm. and the pastor prays a very specific prayer. It was kind of the prayers that I would pray. I would be very specific with God. God, if you do want me to have a husband, make him for me. Give him a heart of a man of God. Give him a heart to be a shepherd for your people. Because if he wants to be a pastor, then I know that he's genuine about his faith with you. And I came from the street. You know what I mean? I came from the hood. I didn't know any men that had that heart for God like that. So that was my prayer. Prayer. Then we meet. And what are your thoughts when we first meet? Well, I guess for me, it was more like I was still very young in my walk and I was developing and just trying to find my way in the church because I didn't grow up in church. So to me, it was just a whole nother scene for me. But then there was something that drew me to Jeannie when I looked at her. She was a worship leader, I guess, at that point. And there was just this orb of light <laughs> just like glowing around her. So like, you know, God just drew me to her and I was just, I felt like she was so out of my league that I didn't have a <laughs> chance, you know, but God found a way to just work <laughs> on my heart and, you know, eventually get us to talk and yeah. pick up from there. And so I was like, okay, who's this guy? And the whole time I couldn't get the thought out of my head that God, you know, was telling me that's your husband. And I'm like, oh, I started acting like a little girl with a crush. I could stop, I could not stop thinking about him. But I'm like rebuking, this is the devil. Uh-uh, devil, he's trying to get me distracted. I do not want a man. I just want Jesus. And mm -hmm. you're thinking the same thing. Yep, I definitely was. I was basically feeling like <laughs> I would go home and then I was like, oh, you know, the devil's trying to distract me, you know, because you think <laughs> that you have to be pure and holy and that doesn't involve the opposite sex. But God was really trying to work on me being a little bit more tender to accepting that. But I was so ambitious and dead set on eventually going to Grenada to study my Bible and to really have that mountaintop moment with my Savior and my, you know, my God now. And then God just started to like really break down that hardness or whatever I was putting up against her. And he's like, you're going to miss out on something amazing, too. You know, I'm trying to work something out here. All right. So let me let me now fast forward a little bit. So we meet in church, we both, we're both thinking like, could this be, could this be? We're both praying, Lord, please don't let this be. We want you, <laughs> we don't want each other, we want you. And I really wanna speak to the singles out there because I feel like the Lord was waiting for us to both be in a place where we were not dependent on the opposite sex. We were not trying to look for a spouse to fulfill our lives. We were completely full with God. We just wanted Jesus and we wanted what Jesus wanted for us. Short, short, long story short, he was supposed to move to Grenada. He doesn't go to Grenada. A couple no. months later, he's still in New York and God had spoken to him now that this was more than just a beautiful girl, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't have said that by myself, <laughs> a girl that you were attracted to, you mm -hmm. know, also you, 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 it was more than just the physical, it was now God was doing something, he was at work. Yeah. So what, as a man, right, because there's men out there that are going to be watching, mm -hmm. how do they know when God is speaking to them about a woman and not to get trapped up in, in just a pretty girl or somebody yeah. that they think fits all their, you know, what they're looking for? Well, for me, what I would say, you know, because I also came from the world. So now coming into the church and like getting this relationship developed with God, I realized men were very visual, you know, so everything for us is what we see is what we want. But the reality with that is like with God, it's not really about our desire or our will. It's about his will. So if you're looking for to find your soulmate or for your wife, what you want to do is actually close your eyes, get on your knees and pray. Mm and allow God to really speak to your heart and speak into your life about who is he actually gonna match you up that's gonna be the pristine, perfect person that has the other compartments of your life that he wants to unlock by uniting you two together. So, all right, three months later, here we are in Central Park recording. We both are in love with each other. We, we were, you know how it is when you first meet somebody and you talk for yeah, 12 hours call. a day on the phone, <laughs> you see each other as much as you can. We were praying together, which I, I think is very important to do because yeah, you need crucial. to seek the will of God. And where there were times where I was praying with him and the Holy Spirit would tell me, treasure him. Kind of like, be nice, but this is long term. This isn't just a, 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 you know, a pass by relationship. This is 
forever. Mm -hmm. So we would pray. We were, you know, we, it was incredible. We were having moments where we were in the word. The Holy Spirit was meeting us. And it was just so great. We were, this, at this point, we didn't even know if we were going to be husband and wife. We both felt God was telling us. Mm -hmm. So we're in Central Park. And we're sitting down, we have our blanket out, we're eating, you know, little treats. And then I'm like, I got to go to worship practice. I'm out. You know, we got to leave. God is number one in my life. We're having a great time afternoon. I need to go do my obligation. He's like, can you please, please just wait? So at this point, mm -hmm. God had plans and he was setting me up and I didn't know about it. But you would eventually propose to me three months into knowing each other. Yeah. What were you thinking? <laughs> well, to me, because I'm very, um, I don't know how to describe it, but I'm very practical and very logical. But when God speaks to me and because I've lived a disobedient life in the past, mm -hmm. what I realize is that if God is going to actually speak to me now, I'm not going to question him. I'm not going to wait on certain things. But what God did tell me, he did tell me that was my wife. So I was like, okay, well, how does this work? And then I was thinking about the future. And he's like, don't worry, I got this. So he actually led me to, I think it was, was it Zales or one of these like, you know, jewelry stores, <laughs> gave me the exact ring that she was basically like, you know, we were talking about whatever engagements and all these different things before and told me the ring, provided for the ring, everything else. Mm -hmm. So my job now, you know, in God's perspective was I need to go and deliver the good news, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which I wanted to throw up. <laughs> I did not expect for that to happen. Yep. And but go ahead. So we're, on, we're now he gets me on a canoe in the middle of Central Park. It's so beautiful. I fought him, of course, because I'm like, I got to get a worship practice. He's like, please, just a couple more minutes. We get on this canoe. It's beautiful. The sun is glistening. It is like, and honestly, I know I'm not like, I'm one of those, those girls who say, this is so cheesy, but it was so magical. It really was. <laughs> and the sun is glistening on the water. And I'm like, I'm such a nature girl. I'm like, look at the water. You know, it's glistening. And I'm trying to follow the, the, the sparkles. And it just literally was sparkling right from the sky all the way to our canoe. And it was not going past our canoe. So I'm thinking, oh, God, you're so good. You give us these beautiful, magical moments. And he's like, that's my cue. <laughs> he gets on his knees and he proposes to me. Mm -hmm. Now, ladies, how I felt, I'm going to be real with you. I thought, what's the pastors going to think? What's our parents going to think? What are people going to think? And I went through all this, and that's how I was getting all sick. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what are people going to think? It's only three months. We, we definitely know, though, I loved him, and God was telling me every way he could was giving me, like, signs, like, marry him. Like, seriously, <laughs> it was amazing that he was my husband, and I had a choice. Would I marry this man, or would I allow the voices of the world or whatever we think should happen, happen. And I couldn't reason that without, with the fact that I knew God told me he was my husband so many times. So I said, yes. Fast forward it seven months into knowing each other, we were married. It's now about to be 10 years. This is our ninth year. We're going into our 10th year. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna, I wanna be honest with you. This was God. When God is in something, he will equip you for it. And we've been through so much within the course of our marriage from getting kicked out of church. Could you believe that? Yep, kicked out of church because there was a schism in the church uh, uh, where there was a split where they didn't agree on our, what our position should be in their church. There was jealousy and all types of mess. And here these two kids from Brooklyn grew up in the streets. We ain't know nothing about Jesus. We fall passionately in love with Jesus. We fall passionately in love with each other. We want to only do what God wants. And here we get kicked out of church. We get devastated by people that we were like, we, thought, to, we yeah. thought we were safe. Yeah. And that rocked our world, but we made it. So Ren, let's talk, there's gonna be, you know, okay, that's one issue. We recently lost our second child. That's another major thing that's super hard. Those are things that can completely ruin your faith, ruin your walk, Some even want you to do something dumb to yourself, let alone your marriage. Those things destroy marriages. How do we get through 
in those times. We've had plenty of those times now. Yeah. What do we do? Well, I mean, you know, life always has a way of hitting you when you least expect it, right? So what you can do prior, you know, is always stay prayed up, stay in God's word. But then when you're going through life, you know, sometimes you will find yourself, and even as I did, you know, when we went through the church, like, breakup and so forth, like, I actually, even though I was strong in the word at the time, found myself battling with depression. And that's something that, it's essentially you feel like you're not the same person that you were. So in those moments, it's great to have a helpmate because when you can't stand, the way the Bible says it is that when, you know, it's, it's a blessed thing to have two because when one falls down, the other one can pick them up. But woe to the person who doesn't have anybody to be there for them. Mm -hmm. So you have to fight certain battles on your own. But when you have someone there to pray for you, they can really strengthen you, gird you up while you're trying to find yourself again. So that was one thing. So even people that are out there dealing with depression, you know, allow your spouse to like help you up. You know, like don't be prideful. Don't like, especially for men, it's way harder for us mm -hmm. to allow help. But I'm telling you, it's the best thing I did because what it did was allow me to finally get free from that and then start to come into my own a little bit more so I can actually pursue the actual will of God. So yeah. there's different battles that you really got to stay and girded I, with God. And I feel like as a spouse, prayer is number one. Prayer is key, yeah, that's key, your lifeline. key. When I can't stand this man and I get in my prayer closet with this man, for this man, the Lord will give me his eyes for him. And he melts our hearts and he brings us together, you know, and on top of that, on top of prayer, you know, the word, the Bible says mm -hmm. to the husband, bathe your wife in prayer. I've done the same thing with him, you know, and as Christians, as believers, that's what we need to do. We need to bathe ourselves with the word because that's the truth. Mm -hmm. So when the lies come, you know, to give up on each other, which is so easy to do in this day and age, that's when you really got to fight it with the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, and God called us to be together forever. So we, we, we came into it knowing that's, that was what we were going to do. I want to say something real quick, okay. too, is just the idea that, you know, a lot of people and what's kind of been on my heart that God has been talking to me about is that people have this perception of marriage that it is all bright and beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, it is the like <laughs> like tiptoeing through the tulips and that there's no there's no friction. You know, like we're all aiming for that non friction marriage. But there's a lot of things that we've discovered even in the friction. Right. There's things that I don't want to share about myself or there's things that are deep within her that she would rather pack away. But through talking it out, you know, through actually getting into maybe heated arguments at times, like that is a more accurate picture at times of what God is looking for. He's not looking for us to hide the baggage of our life. He wants us to bring everything in. You leave out the parts that you're supposed to leave out, but then there are certain things that God has ordained, I believe, to, how, to allow you to work through yeah. as a couple, So which it does is actually brings you closer. Mm -hmm. So you can have some moments, you know, and if that's what it looks like, you know, for me, is what is ha what's, what's actually happened is that it causes us to grow closer together and to know each other's struggles and to want to fight yeah. for each other harder. Yeah, it's incredible to have a, a, a helpmate, a partner in Christ is what I say. You know, it's been 10 years almost and it's been rough, it's been up, it's been down. The number one voice in your relationship should be God's, not the influences of the world, not yeah. the families, not the friends, not even your church. It should be God. Yeah, he's the only after one. that, you take care of what's yours. And your first priority after that relationship with God is to each other and your family. You make it through. God has been so good. There's so much to our story. And maybe we'll share later another time. But I'm just incredible to do. Uh, it's incredible to do life with him, to do ministry with him and um, with God at the center of it all. So right now we get to introduce you to a song that we did um, a while ago now. Yeah. And uh, it's beautiful because we're on it together. Here is Imperfection by yours truly and the Righteous Rebel. Enjoy. So insecure when I look myself in the mirror Sometimes I slip and say some things I know I shouldn't say I think that I fall flat and what I do will never be good enough I get so hard-headed if things don't go my way But your love and no requirement
No. 